let's start. Hello, everyone. Hello, Embedded Vision and AGI people. Uh, my name is Timofey Yuvarov, and I will talk about using ISP for um, real-time data augmentation. Let's uh, quickly highlight my presentation. We will introduce our company. Then we will talk about exposure, exposure in photography and how it applies to machine vision. Then a quick experiment in the lab and some conclusions and problem formul formulation. And then we will propose some solution based on the automotive ISP. So let's start with Pony. We are an international company startup. We have an office in Fremont, which is one of our headquarters. And the other one is in China. So we recently partnered with Hyundai and with Toyota, launched several robotics uh, services worldwide. You can learn more about it on our website. And we develop fully our software and partner with hardware vendors to customize and make uh, collaborations on special projects. So one of our collaboration projects is collaboration with On Semiconductor. We are working on next generation ISP, which is called AP300. We are adding some machine vision functionality, which is one of this functionality I'm going to describe today. And let's go describe the exposure. What is exposure in photography? So everybody knows that in photography, we control three main uh, parameters, which are um, aperture, which is shutter speed, and ISO. So how this exposure triangle is related with exposure in photography. So exposure is just amount of the light which is hitting the sensor. And exposure control is the algorithm that controls these parameters to reach the correct exposure where correct exposure is defined as a exposure which is reaching the effect which photographer intended when he shot the scene. So how does the um, exposure in photography relate to exposure in machine vision, especially in automotive? The first, that in automotive camera, there are no moving parts. There, are, there is no uh, like aperture control. So lens is fixed fixed aperture, so all that we can control are the shutter speed and the gain, which compensates for the slow, for the low exposure time frame. So um, it's important to understand that exposure time and gain control, they are located on one spectrum. So first the exposure time increases, when it reaches the maximum level, it basically kicks in the gain and the gain brings up the image to the desired target. And it's important to mention that ISP chooses its own settings based on what exposure time was used to capture the image. So for like very short exposure time, little light, high gain is used, noise is increased, then noise is suppressed or passing through some special pipeline, which doesn't increase noise that much. And when we are on the other side of the spectrum, high gain and uh, long exposure, then there are different settings where ISP will kick in and uh, maybe uh, different image quality will be the result. So it's important to highlight that exposure control is critical and crucial for the not only photography, but for object detection, because it's a, it, it affects all areas of the image quality. You can follow those later, but almost all aspects are controlled and driven by the exposure control. So for next, let's go to the lab and do a simple experiment with automatic exposure. So what we do, we have a scene with some moving objects, some models, car models, uh, human vision chart, light with changeable settings and contrast resolution chart. So we use a uh, sensor in a single exposure mode. It's important to know that it's in single exposure, so the dynamic range of the sensor is uh, not that high like automotive cameras are using, but it's much easier to demonstrate the effect of oversaturation and other effects of dynamic range reproduction. So we are using a on semi ISP here and a wide angle lens from Imavision. So we are looking at the scene. The left scene is 
uh, taken with uh, dark light. And on the right side, the light strength has been increased. And as the result, we can notice that uh, on the image with increased light, we lost visibility in the bright areas. While in the dark, also not all objects are visible. So what is the conclusion of this uh, experiment? It means that if automatic exposure works, whatever it decides for the scene, doesn't mean that we will capture the objects we are interested to capture in the best exposure from the photographic point of view. So the second experiment uh, is manual exposure. So we have same scene with moving object. Also, the light is fixed and we Explain, we used four different exposure times, three millisecond, 12 millisecond, 36 and 72, like increasing from left to bottom right. And uh, you can see on the moving object how this results. So it's clear from this uh, result, it's clear that in automotive, we cannot use very long exposures, right? So it will be blurred and oversaturated on a human vision chart. Then IMA test, IMA test contrast resolution chart. What is the chart? This chart shows low contrast objects in across all dynamic range. And it shows how well you can detect a, a small contrast object across all dynamic range with a tone mapping inside of the ASP. And we tried to do things linear as possible, but you can see like these are bright patches. These are uh, like, darker patches, and when we increase the exposure time, we reveal the contrast inside of uh, brighter and brighter and brighter, but the patches, which were very bright patches, lost all the features inside. So we cannot read the contrast. No analysis at this time, but it's possible to do, and just doesn't, I don't have time to go through the explanation, but if we were, if we were tasked to detect a um, uh, contrast resolution chart, we would need to feed all representations for all exposure times to the machine learning network to it, for it to be able to recognize this chart at all exposures. So, and on the contrary, when we look at the dark Im dark areas of our images, we we can see that we need long exposures to get them uh, exposed correctly. So what is the conclusion of all this uh, experiment? The conclusion is that there is no exposure which will be optimal for all of the objects in the scene with a high dynamic range. And in the uh, real world, all the images are high dynamic, most of the images are very high dynamic range, night and day. So when we go to the field and bring our exposure settings to the field, we can see two images taken with different exposure times. The left one is taken with uh, longer exposure. So you see some uh, blurring, motion blurring, coming from the motion of the car and the motion of the, our camera as well. And on the right, more shorter exposure, but it's noisier, sharper actually. And also has higher uh, luminance and chrominance noise. So the question which many people and companies are trying to solve is what kind of exposure settings to use. And here we usually try to make the image look sharper and higher contrast, especially if the tone mapping is applied, we apply sharpening before the tone mapping. So to um, pass some detail through the, uh, some compression, gamma-like compression, global tone mapping, algorithmic kind of uh, transformation. But it's inevitable that some of the images will still look like this. So uh, the exposure will still sweep and there will be different uh, speeds, different uh, illuminations. So the same object will be very highly, with very high probability, it will be captured with a low exposure, with a long exposure and with a short exposure. So 
to detect the object uh, with high confidence, we need to provide the network both versions of the image which you see here. So coming to argumentation, like what is argumentation? Argumentation in general, how like companies approach it, it's basically taking a training set and applying some transformations to the set, like uh, some brightness, contrast, noise, uh, editing, adding noise, uh, some sharpening, blurring, uh, uh, geometrical transformation and others. Uh, and uh, like occlusion, yeah. And uh, um, there is a great read called OTML, which uh, describes how learning improves with, uh, with the argumentation, with, uh, if you provide more argumented set versus just a normal set. And Google extends this um, approach to argumentation policies and like applying one policy or another and seeing how it reduces the uh, training set to reach same, like same MAPs on a big test set and um, less ability for like mistake. So uh, OTML, uh, summarizes that like there are three uh, key ways to uh, make training better and improve your data by collecting more data, synthesizing more sorry images, and also doing argumentation. The approach we are thinking about is actually synthesizing the collection and argumentation and making a hybrid version of them and argumenting while collecting data. For the training. So look at this train. We have like E1, E2, E3. These are the norm, this is the normal train of frames. And then we add K frames between original frames, which we call anchor frames. And this is like our argumented train or training. And uh, for the visualization purposes, we added a sine wave here so that in between of each two of each two anchor frames, we add like one overexposed or like K overexposed and another, uh, some other number of underexposed images. So this is just for the demo purpose, but in the real life environment, uh, this will be a normal distribution of uh, random exposure shots. And here is a example of this, uh, example of this argumented train. You see the these frames are exposure is fixed, so it's basically automatic exposure. And in between, we have undersaturated, oversaturated, and all of these guys are going to be uh, labeled with one labeling window and uh, passed to the network for learning. And the second, the second interesting uh, part, which can be argumented inside of the ISP, is the white balance. Like, what is the uh, similarity between white balance and auto exposure? The similarity is that both of the algorithms inside of the ISP trying to guess something which they don't know for sure. Exposure tries to guess the scene brightness and the white balance tries to uh, guess the strength of the argumentation. Sorry, the white balance is trying to guess the temperature of the light which uh, was used to illuminate the scene. And uh, this temperature can be guessed correctly, but most of the time it, it's slightly off the real value and uh, to compensate for this mistake we apply some alternation to the r and b gains which are the results of the prediction of the which light temperature was used to illuminate the scene so it looks like this so we have uh, like anchor frames which are properly white balanced and between them you see like more reddish version more bluish version of the object and then we combine white balance and auto exposure sorry white balance and exposure argumentation together and this is how many different variations of the images we can see so this is the prototype it's based on ap200 sp from one semiconductor and uses uh, ar231 image sensor and the target platform will be ap300 much more powerful isp with uh, dsp on board and uh, the last slide is to compare the 
ISP argumentation, which we describe with conventional methods. So the baseline difference is that we propose argumenting of the capturing process rather than post-process and applying modification to the data which has been captured already. Uh, we change the parameters of the sensor and the ISP has to follow what sensor has captured. So our uh, simulation is accurate and we will um, change all ISP settings accordingly. So the second uh, important difference is that we operate at the raw data level. You know that raw data is captured at 12 or 16, even 20 bit. And uh, when you actually take pictures and uh, try to do some correction in raw, you know how much more space a raw format actually has for a mistake in exposure. And we apply our uh, parameters to the raw data and uh, have very accurate simulation of the different ISP process. And in case of uh, conventional ISP, we can only change the data has, which has been already crushed to 8-bit and where a lot of information has been lost and quantization has been applied and we don't have that uh, quality and um, precision. So as for the compute, it's obvious we don't need any compute while the GPU is needed to do the preparation of the training set for conventional method. And to leverage both of the methods here, it's important to combine both argumentation strategies and use argumentation inside of the ISP for imaging level uh, modifications and also use uh, conventional, conventional process for geometrical uh, distortion, occlusion, rotation, things like the skew all these types of transform. So this is the strategy that we're going to use and we think it's so far very effective. So thank you so much. Let's go to Q&A and hope, hopefully we can show the live demo of the argumentation in the camera which we have developed. Thank you.